is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verses 1 to 5 and 112. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my heart. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. Accept, I pray, the free will offerings of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. Here ends the first reading. The second reading is 
taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Here ends the second reading.
the exercise we press our response shall be let your light shine on us we pray for your compassion on india our country and our motherland we thank you lord for this great country which is rich in cultural heritage natural beauty and abundant resources bless and inspire the leaders who govern our nation teach them to shine the light of your love so that this land of ours will follow paths of progress and prosperity for the good of all our people response let your light shine on us we pray for the members of our school's executive committee for dr ms jian hart provost and ceo of the wellings girls mid schools our academic consultant mr f holmes our principals dr mrs e d rosario and ms j b michael our vice principals mrs s ray and mr ravi rao Our junior section heads, Mrs. M. Khan and Mrs. C. Sagar, and our coordinators, as they share their talents, let them shine and illuminate our lives. Your response? Let your light shine on us. We pray for our teaching faculty and their families. We thank you. O oh Lord, for our teachers who carry out their duties with dedication, loyalty, love, and patience, instruct us to respect and obey our teachers, and help us to assist them in making our lives in school a pleasant and happy experience. We ask you, Lord, to let your light. Shine on all those who assist us every day in school. Our teachers, our office staff, our caretaker, and our sub staff. Your response? Let your light shine on us. We pray today for your blessing on all the students of both our schools. We thank you, Lord, for these bright jewels of the well-endowed schools. Teach them, Lord, to love their schools, respect their teachers, and obey their elders. Let them truly shine in our dark world. Your response? Let your light shine on us. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers we have offered to you today. We ask you to fill our hearts with endless mercy. and help us to understand our duties and responsibilities as administrators teachers parents staff and students of these schools we thank you lord for shining your light upon us all these 153 years as we look forward to a new year in our school lives we fear not what lies ahead For you have always been our strength in our weakness, joy in our sorrow, and light in our darkness. We ask all this in the merciful and matchless name of Jesus, who taught us to pray.
pleasure and privilege to introduce to all of us our special guest and speaker for this morning, Mrs. Aruna C. Goals. Mrs. Goals has been working in the field of education for the past 28 years. Although most of that time has been spent as an administrator, her first love has always been teaching and being with and around students just like you. They are a stress buster for her, especially the little ones in the junior section. She started her career as her alma mater, Loretto Day School, Karantala, in 1995, teaching English and geography in the middle school and economics at the secondary level. She was made coordinator of the middle section in 2006, after which she went on to become the vice principal in 2013 and principal of the same school in 2015. In 2018, she was transferred to Loretto House as principal, where she has been since then and is still there today. Being a mother of three grown-up children, you wouldn't say that looking at her, would you? Uh, she understands perfectly the pulse of her students. She is firm, yet kind, and always ready to encourage a plethora of co-curricular activities in school to help her students develop an all-rounded personality. Being a keen violinist herself, her first love is music. But she is equally passionate about supporting sporting activities coming from a family of sports enthusiasts. Despite her hectic schedule at school and home, she finds time to lend her experience and expertise to several other associations. She is currently Vice President of the Teachers' Centre at the Rebel House, she is Secretary of the Girl Association of Bengal. She is convener for Zone G at the ICSE level. And she is a member of the Executive Committee of the Anglo Indian Heads Association, West Bengal branch. Though born in Kolkata, she is a girl at heart and needs to touch base with her uh, homeland okay, annually. Like all the girls, she loves cooking, music, and enjoys reading. Ma'am, they say the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So let's hope we get to taste some of that cooking someday. Today, we welcome Mrs. Aruna C. Goals to our home's birthday service and look forward to hearing words of wisdom from her. Mrs. Aruna Thank you so much, ma'am, for such a vivid introduction. I'm very honored and privileged this morning to be chief guest at the Rainbow's Nepo Bazaar. No one likes a lamp and puts it under a bowl. Instead, puts it on a lampstand where it gives light for everyone. I was very happy to hear such a wonderful theme chosen for your 153rd Home's birthday service. All of us know what a difficult world we are living in. And to choose a theme where we are the light of the world is so important today. I am reminded of the lady with the lamp, Florence Nightingale, who many years ago cared for the sick and she encouraged nursing in many of the hospitals during the Crimean War. But what many of us may not know is that she struggled. It was not easy for her. She herself contracted bacterial infection and she was bedridden. But that did not deter her. She went on to bring light to so many people around her. Similarly, Martin Luther King, he was and he led a non-violent campaign for the racial justice during the civil rights movement. All of us have heard so much and so much positivity about Martin Luther King. 
but what we really don't remember is that he too struggled. He was arrested 29 times and he survived an assassination attempt. Yet he never gave up. He continued to bring light to so many in the US and he brought an end to racial discrimination in the US. Many of us might have heard of Maya Angelou. Very dear to my heart as well because she writes beautiful poetry. And she was only the second poet to present a poem at the inauguration of President Bill Clinton. But again, she struggled. She had actually um, confessed and she had thought that it was her confession that killed a man. And she was muted for six years. And during those six years, her struggle, she realized what potential she had within her and began to write poetry and began, she became fluent in six languages thereafter. Right here in West Bengal, we have the saint of the gutter, Saint Mother Teresa. She founded the Missionaries of Charity and didn't she bring a light to so many people. She was the light here in West Bengal. So you see children from all of Martin Luther King, even though they struggled, they continued their journey, bringing light in the life of darkness to so many around them. Amid strife, amid struggle, they never gave up, they continued. Today on your Founders Day, 153 years ago, Reverend Joseph Welland and Reverend Herbert Goldsmith began when Welland Goldsmith woke up. And I'm sure they struggled too. Must have not been easy for them so many years ago. Yet all of you are seated here today, a fruit of their hard labor. We live in a very fragmented world, children. And I'm sure you know how difficult it is. We are divided by religion, by politics, even natural borders and barriers, logistics. So today on your Founders Day, make a promise to make a change. Instead of always hearing about others being a light to the world, you be the light to someone. And I saw the little children sing this morning, Shine Jesus, shine the light of the world. You have so much talent within you. You have so much of skill and aptitude. All you have to do, dear children, is change and convert your talent to bring about a change in the world. One small step taken by you can make a huge difference. You know, when you have a little drop in the ocean, it causes a ripple effect. Imagine if you, all of you, when in Goldsmith, focus our children, make a small difference in the world. What a ripple effect it's going to have, leading from and starting from when in Goldsmith. All you have to do is make a conscious choice. Today on your Founders Day, make that choice to bring a change to the world so that you can be a light in someone else's world. Recently, I had gone for a retreat. I took my children to Dhyan Ashram. And the priest there shared with us about fasting. I think all of us fast. We fast from food and drink. And we are supposed to fast from negativity and distress around us. But he taught us a new way of fasting. He called it E-Fast. A capital E-Fast. And that is to pass from all gadgets. We are all very happy with a little gadget in our hands, no? You keep scrolling up and liking and seeing who's following you. He suggested that we be fast. And you know, if you try that, children, just one hour, once a week, you will see how clearly you will be able to think, how your concentration span increases how your thought process will increase. 
So number one, when you make a conscious choice and you are able to be fast and your mind is clear, you will be able to be the light in someone's world. But none of this can happen if you don't pray. And I just love your motto, Nisi Dominus Frustra. My motto, Lange motto to live in the world today. Because without God, everything is in vain. So if you can, number one, make a conscious effort, clear mind through e-fasting, and number three, if you pray, I'm sure, dear children, you will make a difference in the world. Everything in your life is a reflection of a choice you have made. If you want a different result, make a different choice. That's all you have to do. And I feel so jealous sometimes because you have a great person like Dr. Mrs. Hart for you to emulate. If you look back at man, man has so many accolades, so many feathers in her cap and so many achievements. Children, you can just have a living mentor here for you. Just emulate man. And you will see, she's so erudite, she's so eloquent, so um, an evergreen. From the time I was a little child, man looks the same to me, evergreen. You have so much to imbibe from man, learn from her. And today on your Founder's Day, such a great legacy left behind by Reverend Vernon and Reverend Goldsmith and through a wonderful mentor like Dr. Mrs. Hart, all you have to do is make a conscious choice and I'm sure a small step made by you will make a huge difference in the world. Thank you very much ma'am for having me this morning. I'm very honored and privileged. And congratulations, dear teachers. Everything has been so perfect. And what I love is the way the children smile when they are singing. So you have so much to give from your heart. Congratulations, thank you, and God bless you.
for 2023. Um, I'm going to request uh, the island that this is supposed to please come up again and give you some exercise this morning. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that comes, was said by Winston Churchill. Mahatma Gandhi, on the other hand, said, Success. Uh, success does not come from physical capacity. It comes from an indomitable will. And the recipients of today's award ceremony have shown courage against all odds and indomitable will to succeed. We would like to recognize these qualities in our students who have brought honor to their alma mater. I would like to call on stage Srishti Gatta, who passed the ICSC examination 2022-2023 with a commendable 95.2% and is presently pursuing her studies with us. I request Mrs. Aruna C. Gomes to please do the honors, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. I would now like to call Diksha Jain, who passed the ISC examination 2022-2023 with 94.75%. I request Mr. Arjanis to please hand over this award. Thank you, uh, sir. I request Dr. Mrs. E. Tiruzaru, please come on stage, ma'am, to handle the next award. The Principal's Award is a notable award, and this year's recipient is a soft spoken yet confident girl. Rukhaya Nas has won the gold. In Taekwondo 2022 and 2023. We wish her all the best in her future endeavors. I request uh, Dr. Kirozari to please come and look at us. Thank you so much, Ban. last award, that is the Provost and CEO's Award, which is the most prestigious award given by our school. And this year's recipient deserves to be recognized for her various contributions to school life. As head girl, Harshita often goes above and beyond her duty to take on additional responsibilities. She exemplifies the motto of excellence, honor, and service, and therefore truly deserves the Provost and CEO's award for the best all-round student of 2023. I request our Provost and CEO, Dr. Hart, please do the award.
I think there's someone else who deserves an award this morning, or oh, not an award, but uh, certainly a token of appreciation for a wonderful uh, message given to each one of us today, especially to you young girls, that you should try and be shining lights wherever you are. We are very grateful to uh, Mrs. Aruna, CEOs, for being with us, giving up on her time. We thank her husband, Mr. Brian Gomes, also for joining us this morning. A uh, small token of our love and appreciation for you, ma'am. So please stop moving. 